Hey, family, God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. And as we always say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Man, as always, I'm excited to have you all here be a part of this stream on tonight. Man, we have a powerful word that I believe tonight will impact your life, will bless your life, and as we impart into your life. And if I were you, I would call everybody I know, have them tune in to tonight's lesson. I believe that we're going to just have your faith so supercharged tonight as a result of tonight's word. Listen, you just don't want to miss it. All right, listen, so sit back and relax and prepare your heart to enjoy a great, great word. As we always say, grab you a pencil, ink pen, pencil, something. Grab it and make sure you're taking good notes tonight because uh, what you don't what you don't need today, today you will need on tomorrow. Also, want to welcome you all, as we always say, to the place where change begins, because we are changing lives that will ultimately impact the world. And thank God for our e church. We bless God for you all being a part of our lesson on tonight. We are so grateful and so glad to the Lord that you all are here. As we always ask you to do every week, won't you please consider? liking this stream all right wherever you are in your part of the world i need you to like our stream on tonight all right but not only like us because when you like us you put us in the alpha rhythm but share our page all right share our page those of you who are watching us on youtube make sure you share and subscribe to this page all right like share and subscribe especially all of my youtubers I need you tonight to like, share, and subscribe to our page tonight because, listen, I want to make sure that you all have every opportunity to uh, uh, help us get this word out to as many as we can on tonight. All right? So if you do, if you do that favor for me, I would really appreciate whatever you do, you do on tonight to make sure this word gets out tonight to as many folks as possible. All right, praise God. And then also we want you to uh, consider, let me see how to do this now. Consider, consider, uh, shoot us a, 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 an email. Why don't you do that? Shoot us an email at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. That's momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. As always, I would love to, see you, hear from you. I love hearing from all of you. So again, shoot us email at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. Also, want you to remember, if you have a smartphone, if you have a smart, I'm sorry, smartphone and a smart TV, listen, you can always tap on your, 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 your device and uh, pull us up on your television. We'll come across there in living color. Listen, I want you to see me as uh, we deliver tonight's word. And as always, I believe you are going to be blessed. So again, while you're doing that, right quick, uh, do a screenshot of our email address because I want to hear from you. All right. Also, if you need prayer, call our prayer line, 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. Listen, I love hearing from you. You can call and give us your most urgent prayer request. You can call us and tell, tell us whether you're liking the stream or not. Whatever it is, we desire to hear from you because we love hearing from our viewing audience. All right, who knows tonight where we are uh, in our reading on tonight? Come on. I need all the smart folks. Come on, let us know. Where we are tonight, as far as our reading is concerned, if you know, drop it right quick in the chat. Come on, drop it in the chat right quick. Let me know where you are or where, where, where we are. Come on, we should be tonight. If you, you should be in Mark, the sixth chapter. Come on, Mark 6 through 10. I pray you're keeping up with us. We're in Mark 6 through 10. All right, that's Mark 6 through 10. As always, we pray that you all are keeping up with us. Man, we are almost done, y'all. Listen, we are so close to being finished. You'd be surprised that technically in three weeks to four, we could be through 
reading through the whole Bible. You believe that? We have done so much, you all, over the last year. Man, I am so glad and happy, elated that you all have been keeping up with us as we read and journey through the Word of God. Man, it has been awesome. All right, listen, I want you to take notes right quick. Look at this here. This is our schedule. All right, right quick, look on the screen. This is our upcoming schedule. All right, it's on your screen. Thursday, we have Mark 11 through 16. Friday, Friday we have Luke, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 through 5. Saturday, we have Luke Gospel, chapter 6 through 10. On Sunday, we have Luke's Gospel, uh, 11 through 15. Monday, we do 16 through 20. All right. And then on Tuesday, we do Luke's Gospel 21 through 23. And then you see right there, we begin John on Wednesday. John chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. I give you a chance to do a screenshot. The many of you are, you're doing screenshots from your, your cell phone. I give you a chance to take a screenshot right quick. All right. I'm going to make sure all of you get it. Or you can check on my page on Facebook, and there you will see Sister Crystal has done such a marvelous job on uh, 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 doing our, what do you call it, designs for right. us. Graphics, there you go. Maybe it's something what it was. Our graphics, we thank God for her. All right. Also, don't forget on Friday, feel free to join us for our Sunday school. This Friday, Friday morning, if you're available at 11 a.m. That's Friday morning at 11 a.m. I'm asking those of you who can to join us for our time of Sunday school at 11 a.m. on our conference call line. Come on, uh, write it down. I'll say it. You can uh, write it down. That's 978-990-5000. That's 978-990-5000. Access code 355794. All right. That's 978-990-5000. Look in the chat, you'll see it. Uh, 5000, access code 355794. Saying, Pastor Larry, I don't want to comment, but I do want to listen in. That's awesome. Take your phone, put your phone on mute and listen in. And listen, allow our teachers to give you a great word from the Lord on that day as we teach the word of God. But also, Tuesday morning, if you love to pray, listen, this are all are for the prayer warriors who love to pray. Meet us Tuesday morning on that same line. Tuesday morning, meet us uh, on the same line, 978-990-5000, access code 355794. Meet us there for prayer every Tuesday morning. You want to make sure that, that you are there and be a part of uh, our prayer time. Man, listen, we have so many great testimonies of what God is doing, and you want to be a part of that, all right? You want to be a part of that as we uh, uh, pray that God does what only God can do. And so I encourage you, I implore you, I challenge you to be a part of our prayer time. That's this Tuesday morning at the 10 a.m. hour, all right? All right, y'all, let's see who's here today, and let's get into the nice word. Let me see. Let me start. I see you. God bless you, girl. I see you. Hey there, Mr. Price. God bless you. I see you. Look at you. Zion Faith Center. Bless your heart. I see you. Dre, what's going on, my brother? I see you. God bless your heart. Uh, let me see. Christo. Hey, daughter. I see you. Uh, let me see. Uh, Mr. Anderson. God bless you. I see you. Tommy, what's going on, sir? I see you. Hey, mama. Love you, girl. I see you right there. Thanks for being here. Hey, my son. I see you. Uh, Sister Barbara Jean Robinson, bless your heart. I see you. Hey, cuz. I see you, Roz. God bless you. Good to have you tonight. LT, Deacon Taylor, bless your heart, sir. I see you. Sister Gloria, God bless you. Glad you made it tonight from Arkansas. God bless your heart. Good to see you. Sister Annetta, God bless you. I see you. Deacon Price, bless you, sir. I see you. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Minister Gina, God bless you. I see you. Hey, Pastor March, Lady March, God bless you all. 
that you all mentioned tonight. There he is, the preacher extraordinaire. Elder Tory Brown, bless you, sir. I see you. Listen, if I didn't say your name, won't you write quickly, drop your name in the chat? I want to make sure I acknowledge you. Hey, Mr. Ross, bless you, sir. I see you. All of you all who have came tonight, I thank God for you all, man. It's good to have you all here on tonight. I so thank God that you all are here. And I bless God for you. I thank the Lord for you. All right, let's pray. Let's get into the word tonight. Father of heaven, thank you again, as always, for this privilege, for this opportunity to be here with these your sheep. God, tonight, speak to us. God, tonight, ignite our faith, that our faith may grow, and God, cause a respond. God, respond to our faith tonight as we dig into your word and our faith come alive. You said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God, tonight, we beseech your glory in this place. God, tonight, let it come alive. And then let our faith bring to pass those things we have in store for us. We so bless you and we so thank you and give your name maximum glory. It's in Jesus' precious name. We do pray and thank you in advance. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, class. You know where we're going. Mark 11. Come on, right quick. Mark 11. Mark 11. Look at verse 23. This is our foundational text. Mark 11. And verse 23. Come on, class. I know you're there. Come on. Mark 11, verse 23. These are the words of Jesus. He says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things, here it is, which he shall say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Tonight, you all, I want to get back into our lesson. Uh, we've been doing it for the last few months or so. But tonight, I want to tag a subtitle to this. And I want to deal with activating God's ability through faith. Activating God's ability through faith. Activating God's ability I want to add a, another word through your faith, but the implication there is you and I. Understand, family, it is God's desire that you and I live by faith. The Bible says four places in the, in, in the word of God that the just shall live by faith. Simply means faith is not something that, that you and I do uh, as a happenstance, but we intentionally release our faith. We on purpose have a, uh, a lifestyle, if you will, of faith. And what makes this important is that sometimes you all, uh, many of us believe that we can just kind of uh, meander through life and God will do it, you know, some kind of way or, you know, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. But that is not family how it works. We don't just by happenstance get the blessings of God. But you and I are supposed to live this life of faith on purpose, but live it by faith. And as you and I live this life by faith and on purpose, listen, we can cause the hand of God to move in our favor. I'm going to say that again. We cause the hand of God to move in our favor. Pastor Larry, what are you saying? Simply saying this, that as you and I, begin to seek the will of God and seek God's heart and God's mindset for our lives, we then on purpose cause the hand of God to move in our lives. Here it is. As a result of you and I using and exercising our faith. And listen, don't let anybody convince you that you don't have faith. The Bible says in uh, Romans chapter number 12, I believe it's around verse number three, that God has given to every man, here it is, y'all, the measure of faith. And so since God has already given you and I the measure of faith, God then desires that you and I find ways to allow that faith in God to come alive in our heart and begin to live by faith. And so as we get back into our original text, what I want to do is help all of us see the importance of bringing our mouths or our words in agreement 
with God and with his word. Ooh, ooh, come on. I said, bring it our mouths in line or in agreement with God and with his word. Pastor Larry, why is that important? Well, in Amos 3 and 3, it says this. Can two walk together, something be agreed? What simply says this. How can we get any place or become productive until you and I find a place to agree? Even Jesus says, if you agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done unto you that the Father is glorified. So the Pali, bless your heart. I see it. God bless you. And so what he's saying is, is if you and I will find a way to agree on this earth as touching anything, God said, it shall be done unto you and I that the Father is glorified, which simply means that he wants us to come together get on one accord and begin to believe God to do what only God can do. And so if you've been with us, y'all, any amount of time, we've covered a lot of ground out of this text. Man, we did a six-part uh, uh, sub-series uh, over the last six weeks. And so we're going to get back to our foundational text, and hopefully we can get this in and uh, move on. But you know how God does. God's got a way. Of expanding what he wants to do. And so uh, the fact that we're saying this, you all, I want us to embrace that we can activate God's ability. And this is what I want to get in or get you to see on tonight, that our faith can cause the ability of God to be activated to the degree that things happen. You recall, I want to say in the book of Exodus, God told Moses, say, Moses, hit the rock and water would flow. And Moses had to, by faith, hit that rock and cause water to flow out of that rock. When uh, when Naaman went to go dip in the, in the Jordan, Naaman dipped by faith. And it was his faith in obeying the man of God that caused his healing to take place. Pastor, what are you saying? Simply saying this, that it is our faith, children of God, that activates the hand of God or the ability of God to move in our behalf. Many of you all know my story that uh, seven years ago, the enemy attacked my life with cancer. Now, I'm not sure how long, how long it was there, but I know he did his job by attacking my life with cancer. But listen, I did not sit back and allow the devil to torment my, my, my body and ruin my body with cancer without fighting back. Simply saying, listen, I use my faith. I use my faith and my trust in God and begin to speak God's word of healing in my life. Now, we had, we had a procedure done, and so we went through with the surgery, but the hand of God had to do the healing. Hear me. We allow, we do what we can in the natural, but when nothing else fails, God still has to be the one who manifests the healing process in our lives. Tonight, I am before your face 100% cancer-free. Why? Because the hand of God was activated in my life, and God healed me. Man, all through my life, I have testimony upon testimony of the thing that God has done in my life. Right now, time don't permit. But, man, listen, one of these days, I'm going to give my testimony and do a whole service on what God has done for me. And so I'm sure many of you all, God has done some things in your life that if God had not done what he done when he did it, man, our life would have been a wreck. Come on, somebody. But because the power of God stepped in and the hand of God stepped in because you activated your faith, man, listen, God did what only God can do. And for that, we are absolutely grateful. Now, on last time, we covered two points, you all, out of this text. And our, our, our first point was you have to identify the problem and its source. You and I must identify the problem and its source, right? And then we said number two was that you and I uh, have the right to exercise our authority over that situation. That's what you're saying. I'm saying that if you and I know that we've been given a right by God, we know that we can exercise our God, here it is, 
our God-given right over every demonic force, over every demonic attack of our lives. You and I, child of God, have been given the right by God Almighty to activate the power of God in our lives. You say, Pastor Larry, I can't do that. The devil is a lie. Yes, you can. You and I, child of God, have been given the God-given right to activate or exercise your authority that's been given to you and I by God because of our sonship. The Bible says over in St. John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as believed on him, having to them gave you the power to become the sons of God. I'm going to say it again. It says, as many as believed on him to them gave you the power to become the sons of God, as many as believed on his name. Pastor Larry, will that find again? St. John chapter 1, verse 12. Simply saying this, that if you and I believe on him, we've been given the power, the authority to become the sons of the living God. Listen, write this down, will you? Write this down. Faith in knowing the will of God gives us the boldness to speak directly to the, the situation and expect something to happen. Ooh, I'm going to say it again. I said faith in knowing the will of God gives you and I or gives us the boldness. Please underline, highlight the word boldness. It gives us the boldness to speak directly to every situation. Here it is, and expect something to happen. I dare somebody be bold in, in the chat right now. Put in the chat something is getting ready to happen. Woo, come on, family. And they testimony. I need you to put in the chat right now. Something is getting ready to happen. Come on. I need all my brave saints. Come on, all my bold saints to put in the chat right now. Something is getting ready to happen. Pastor, how can you be so confident? Oh, because the word of God says so. Come on. Somebody put in the chat. Something is getting ready to happen. Oh, yes. Amen. Pastor, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, is my boldness, or as some call it, my confidence, right? My confidence happen, or my confidence manifests when I know I've been given permission by God to speak the word. And whatever I speak to, here it is, has to respond to whatever I speak to. Come on. If I said it, my situation has to respond to my words as though God himself said it. Ooh, Pastor, you've been heavy now. No, I'm telling the truth that my situation has to respond as though God himself said it. See, because tonight I want us to look in Mark chapter 9. All right? Mark chapter 9, 17 through 29. And something here tonight I want to show you. That because I promise you, when you see it, it's going to change your whole outlook, change your whole perspective on what it takes to speak to anything. Because you and I, when we have faith-filled words, hear me, class, when we release faith-filled words, it is our faith-filled words that we release in the atmosphere that cause the hand of God to move in our favor. And when the hand of God moves in our favor, it our words cause a, a shift, if you will, in the atmosphere. And so things change. When you speak to your body, your cells hear what you say. Your muscles, they hear what you say. Your bloodstream, they hear what you say. Come on. Your money, it hears what you say. Demonic spirits, they hear what you say. And so they respond as a result of what you and I say in line with the word of God. See, many of us haven't yet come to grips with God has given us authority over demonic spirits. I'm going to say that again. God has given you and I authority over demonic spirits. See, what happens is we watch you all, we watch too much Hollywood, too many movies. And most of the time, what, what, what we see is the preacher or the missionary or the deacon 
getting thrown through the church, getting beat up by, de by demons. But the Bible says, Jesus says in the book of Luke, he says, Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. That word power means delegated authority. And if Jesus has given you and I, as a result of our relationship and our right standing in him, if he's given us power, then what he's saying is, I've given you delegated authority, here it is, over all the influence over the enemy. Hey, sister, the God bless your heart. I see you. Sister Michelle, God bless you all. And so since he's already given us power, he's given us authority, then you and I can pray from the position of confidence in what he's already given us. Ooh, come on, somebody put in the chat, it's already mine. Come on, put in the chat right now, it's already mine. The power is already yours. The power of the living God through the blood of Jesus is already in you. And so when you pray, you pray then from the position of already possessing what God says you and I have a legal right to have. And once we know it's our right to have it, listen, you can pray bold when you know the authority has been given to you and I. Come on. If Jesus has given you and I the uh, delegated authority, it simply means I've given you permission. Here it is. Permission to act in my place. Come on. That's what delegated authority is. Permission to act in my place. You recall the apostle Paul said it this way. Paul says, ye are ambassadors for Christ which means that I've been given permission to stand in the place of Jesus. Here it is, as though I'm him. See, the, 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 the ambassador of America, we have many of them, but the ambassador of America, they get to, to speak on behalf of the president. Even though they are not the president, they can act on his behalf. You know why? because they've been given instructions from the president. And whatever the president tells them to do, they can carry it out in any part of the world that they're in as though they are the president. Watch this. And their voice carries the same weight as the president. Woo, come on now. Don't miss this. You and I are his mouthpiece. We are his ambassadors. We've been given the rights by Jesus. Come on. To speak on his behalf, we've been given delegated authority to speak on his behalf. And watch this. Whatever you speak to has to obey you as though Jesus himself was giving the command. Woo, come on, get this class. Because watch this. Demons obey what Jesus told them to do. Come on. And their only response was, their response was to do what he said. As a matter of fact, you will read all through the Gospels that when he showed up, they asked the question, did you come to torment us before our time? Because they knew who he was. And he told them, hold your peace. Ooh, I wonder what would it be like if, if you were in the grocery store and demonic spirits saw you and said, oh, there she is. You tell them, say, hey, hold your peace. Come on. Because the power of God was so prevalent on the inside of a child of God that every demon in hell has to hold their peace because they know that you and I possess the power of God, watch this, to command and to be obeyed. That's right. We have the power to command and to be obeyed. Why? Because we have the power of the living God living and residing on the inside of us. Now, Go right quick to Mark, the ninth chapter. St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Look at verse number, uh, let's start at verse 17. All right, Mark chapter nine. Look at verse 10, um, verse 17. It says, and the multitude answered and said, Master, I'm sorry, the one other multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. Now, don't miss this, y'all. Here's someone 
who was in trouble, and he brought his son to Jesus. Come on, I wonder how many of you all have ever brought your problem to Jesus? Come on. If anyone besides me ever brought your problem to Jesus. Now, the Bible said this man brought his, his, his dumb son. Now, this word dumb wasn't a bad word. What it was saying was his son who had an issue. The son had an issue. A demonic spirit was plaguing this man's son. It was driving his son up and down the wall, right? Notice here, we see our point number one that, that his father did. He identified the problem and its source. He said, Jesus, my son, has a, 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 a dumb spirit. Now, I need you to write this down because here's where many Christians live, you all. Write this down. Ignoring a problem won't change it. Come on, somebody, get that, get that, get that. That's good there. I said, ignoring a problem will not change it. Let me say that again. Ignoring a problem will not change it. Pastor, what are you trying to say? You'd be surprised how many Christians just ignore problems and think that eventually it'll go away. I want to know, how many of y'all in the chat? Come on, by show of hands, by show of love, by show of hearts. How many on the chat have been through problems, tried to ignore them, and you realize that ignoring this problem didn't change it? Woo! Come on, somebody. Maybe it's just me. You said, if I ignore it, it'll go away. If I overlook it, it'll just disappear. Come on, besides me, you said, if I don't say nothing to it, it won't change. But hear me, children of God, ignoring a problem will not change the problem. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what it's going to do. It's going to frustrate you. It's going to have you aggravated. Watch this. If you ain't careful, it's going to put you in the in the, uh, 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 a bad state of mind. Why? Because many Christians, y'all, we think that that giving something that, that, that giving something to God means that I sit there and do absolutely nothing. Or I ignore it as though it doesn't exist. But giving it to God, you all, means to approach it the way God would approach it. Come on. Anything I give to God, it means I approach it the way God would approach it. Let me give you an example. One of the hardest things to do is to love somebody that's done you wrong. But when I give it to God, I'm telling God, I give this to you so I approach it from your perspective. Well, you'll find that in Matthew, the fifth chapter. He says, do good to him, love him. Now, that's hard on the flesh. But understand, you all, God is more concerned with our conformity than he is with our comfort. Man, I wish I put that in the chat. I think God is more concerned with our conformity than he is with our comfort. Pastor, please make that make sense. Simply saying this, God is more concerned with us looking like his son than he is with us being comfortable and having things our way. Right? And so he never said ignore a problem, but he said speak to it. Now, well, when God told us to speak to it, when you look in Genesis uh, chapter 1, between verse 3 and verse 24, seven times you will read what the Bible says, and God said, and God said, and God said. I want somebody to put in the chat, and God said. Because until we learn how to make things happen, we'll keep living by, by our own definition. Somebody put in the chat, and God said. Because when God saw a problem, he spoke to it. Right? He spoke to it. And God said. The Bible says, and God said, and God saw, and then he said it was good. God said, he saw what he said, 
And then he said, it's good. Hit my point. Seven times. Now, you understand, seven, Pastor Marks, the number seven is God's number of completion. But oh, I'm sorry, completion and perfection, right? That's number seven. The eighth time God spoke, God now was setting in order for mankind to dominate and to rule like him. Right? We know the number eight is the number of, of new beginnings. What God was here reestablishing or establishing an order that mankind could use to dominate and rule just like him. Look here on the bottom of the screen. You will see it. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Look at what it says. And God said, this is the eighth time in Genesis chapter 1, that God spoke. And God said, here it is, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, here it is, and let them have dominion. Now, the first thing I want you to see here, so to Lillian, watch this now, is when God, at this point, God had not made man. God said, let's make man. But notice here, God said, let us make them. Right? God said, let's make them. God said, not only does man have dominion, but God said, I want both of them. Here it is, to have equal parts in this dominating process. All right? Because many times we think that, you know, well, uh, 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 Eve could not have told the devil or the serpent to leave her alone. Yes, she could have. Because she had the same authority as Adam, right? And at this juncture, she was operating with the same authority as Adam had. Now, watch this now. God says, let's make man in our image. After our likeness, here it is, let them have dominion. Dominion is you all over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and, and over the cows, and over all the earth. Here it is, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. Now, y'all got to watch this now. Look at it again in the C-E-B version. Same verse, different translation. All right? Look at it here in the C-E-B version. It says, then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they make charge sorry, may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth. Here it is, and all that crawleth, or all the crawling things on the earth. Y'all, please get this. I, I see a pattern here. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. Look at it here now in the C E V. Translation, all right? The C-E-V translation. Come on, class. Are you there? It's right here. Watch this now. It says, God said, now we will make humans, as you and I, and they will be like us at the Godhead, the triune being. They'll be like us. We will, here it is, let them rule the fish, the birds, and all the other living creatures. Now look, y'all. I've been reading this passage right here for 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 decades. Here is something that jumped off to me, or jumped out to me that I read it before, but today it got real. Because notice, you all, God made provision for us to dominate and to work, or to have dominion over the devil before the devil caused Adam to stumble. I'm going to say it again. God made provision for us to dominate all the works of the devil before the devil caused Adam to stumble. I'm going to say it again. God made provision for you and I to dominate the works of the devil before the devil caused Adam to stumble. 
Pastor, where did you see that at? Yo, it's right here in the text. It says that God gave man dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And the CEB, it says, over all the crawling things in the earth. The CEB says, over all living creatures. What is wrong? The serpent he used was crawling in the earth. Satan is a living creature. God knew beforehand that man or that Adam was going to fall. God says, before I make this man, I purposed in my heart to give him dominion over the devil before the devil caused him to fall. Which means then that before the enemy caused us to miss God, we have already been given permission by God to exercise and walk in the same authority over every demonic spirit the enemy sends our way. Which means whatever plans your life, child of God, you and I have been given permission by God to have authority over it. I dare somebody put in the chat right now, I have authority. Come on. I have authority. Come on, class, by faith. Pastor, I don't feel it yet. I don't care. Put it into my faith. I walk in authority. Come on. You got to come on. You got to say, child of God, I walk in authority. That's right. Something little here. Right now, you and I walk in authority. Come on. Over demonic spirits. Look at verse uh, 18, you all, in our text. See, because the Bible says over in John, or uh, I believe it's 1 John uh, 5. 17, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. And so if we are like him, it means we carry the same authority as Jesus did. Come on. Are you all in, uh, I guess not, not, not yet. I have to give it to you, right? Come on. Uh, Mark 9, look at verse number 18. Come on, class. Are you there? Come on. That's right. Come on. Never put in the chat. I have authority. So the genie, come on, right. put it in. I have authority. Come on, declare it, Mr. Anderson. I have authority. So the Michelle, come on, say it. I have authority. LT, I see you. Come on, declare it. I have authority. I see you, mama. Come on, I have authority. Now, look here in Mark 9, verse 18. It says, And whatsoever he, the, 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 the demonic spirit, taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gash his teeth, and pineth away. And I spoke to thy disciples that they may cast him out. Here it is, y'all. And they could not. Man, what a terrible, terrible, awful feeling. Here it is. These, this, this man brought his son to Jesus, uh, uh, his posse. They cast out this devil, and they couldn't do it. Notice you all, here it is. The followers of Jesus were not functioning like Jesus. I'm going to say that again. The followers of Jesus were not functioning like Jesus. Pastor Larry, why is that that's so critical? Because you and I are followers of Jesus. Therefore, we should function like Jesus. I'm going to say that again. If you are followers of him, we should function like him. Jesus says, greater work than these shall you do. Why? Because you're his followers. If you and I follow Jesus, and we do, we should function like him. He says, the reason you should function like me, because I am going back to my father. But greater works than these shall you do. He says, what you see me do? You are marveling over what you see. He says, that's nothing. You're going to do what I do. Watch this now, but on another scale to a greater degree. In other words, like now, we're on uh, YouTube. We're on Facebook and other platforms. But watch this. We have the potential of touching billions of lives right now. If everybody on this planet tuned in, we could touch billions right now 
we carry their potential. Why? Because of social media. That's all I'm saying. That's the great right there. We have a potential of getting more folks saved, getting more folks healed. Why? Because of this platform. Jesus knew back then that greater work than these you would do. Because if you have faith and believe, you can get folks, watch this, you can get folks healed right here on social media. Listen, before we go off tonight, I'm going to pray. And we're going to believe God that through this venue, this stream, that your life is changed for the better. That your, your body is healed. Your mind is healed. Your money is changed for the better. We're going to believe God that some of you all get houses and, and cars and lands and, and whatever it is you're believing God for. We believe that, that, that there is no distance between where we are and where you are. Because the word says, if we agree on earth as touching, guess what? This venue right here is as touching. Because you are there, I'm here, but we're going to believe God together. And guess what? We're going to believe God for a miracle in your life. Woo, come on. Somebody put in the chat room, I believe for a miracle. Come on. If you believe God for a miracle, believe God for a tangible change in your life, listen, tonight, y'all, we're we going to pray. All I'm going to do is pray and believe with you and believe for you. But Jesus is going to do all the healing. Come on. The miracle you need in your life is going to come from God Almighty. Our prayer team is going to pray while I'm praying. We're going to join together and believe God to bring transformation right there in your house. That's right. Whether you at work, on the job, uh, in your car, in the garage, listen, we're going to believe God to bring change right there where you are. You know why? Because I believe God. Come on. Years ago, there was a, a preacher named Catherine Kuhlman who always said, I believe in miracles. Y'all guess what? I believe in miracles. You know why? Because I have experience in my life. If God didn't do it for me, I'd be struggling. But guess what? God himself has given me more miracles than my time will allow to tell you right now. But I, I tell you this, though. God is a miracle working God. Woo! I wish somebody would catch that tonight and put in the chat. Say he's a miracle worker. Y'all be family because he is. He he is indeed a miracle worker. Pastor, how you know? Listen, he's been tried and proven based on my life. Here it is, my personal history with God. I know what God can do. I know what faith and trust in God can do. Because you know what? I've seen God do it myself, y'all, in my life. Come on. So the question is, how many followers do we have, y'all, right now of Christ who aren't functioning like Christ and causing others to miss their miracle because they are not functioning like Christ? Hear me, y'all. Jesus wants you and I to function like him. I'm telling you, he wants us to function like him. But, you know, even in our text, when the disciples didn't heal this boy, y'all, Jesus, y'all got an attitude. Or oh, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. I said, Jesus, y'all got an attitude. Pastor, for real, yes, he did. Y'all, Jesus got an attitude because the disciples were not functioning like him. Look in the text. It says, he answered him, the man, and said, Oh, faith of genera gen generation, here it is. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Y'all, Jesus, he was upset. Here it is. The disciples were following him. They saw him do miracles. Watch this, y'all. He breathed on them. And they cast out devils. You recall in Matthew's gospel, they came back saying, Lord, the demons are subject to us in your name. He said, don't be astonished about that, but rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb book of life. But well, here it is. They face a different kind of demon. I would suggest to you probably a master demon. And they forgot, watch this, 
they still had authority. See, listen, let me encourage somebody. It does not matter the rank of the demon. Come on, hear me. It does not matter the rank of the demon. Because Jesus says, I have given you all power over all the power of the devil. Now, in that text, the word devil suggests Satan, who is the prince of devils. And so Satan does not have a demonic spirit that, he's, that he rules over. That's over him. In Satan's domain, he is the, the big dog. All right? Almost call it something else. But in Satan's domain, he is the big dog. Jesus says, I've given you authority or power over him. And so if he's given me power over him, that means that I don't care how much power he has, you have more power than that person or that spirit. Now, watch this now. Look at it, you all, in the uh, uh, EXB translation. This is going to mess you up. Watch this. You know, Jesus asked the question. He says, he says, you people have no faith. He called them unbelieving and faithless generation. Come on. Now, here's the question. Why would Jesus get upset at his disciples for not casting out this devil, out of this boy, or these demons out of this boy? I'll tell you why. Because he knew, here it is, he knew what was in there. Woo, did y'all hear what I just said? I said because he knew what was in there. And because he knew what they had in them, he understood they had enough power and authority to command those spirits in that boy to come out of here. Come on. He says, how long must I stay with you? I want you to hear the texture and the tone, you all, of his voice. Hear the, 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 the rigorous of his voice. He was wanting to know that I'm flaming, y'all, because I got to do, here it is, what you have the capability of doing. You know, that that be as bad as, as my child saying, Daddy, come over here and clean up, up my room for me. That makes no sense. Why in the world would I come to your house and clean up your room for you when God has given you the capacity to clean up your own room? That makes no sense. But Jesus got angry because he equipped them and empowered them with his authority. Here it is. And they wouldn't do it. Look at verse 20, y'all. What you got? You, you, listen, you got to see verse 20. All right. Look here in verse number 20. And they brought him to, unto him, the boy who, who uh, had the uh, uh, demons in him. And when he saw him straightway or right away, the spirit tear him and he fall to the ground. And watch this, y'all, began wallowing and foaming. In other words, y'all, this demon now begins to manifest. This is why I tell folk, when you call yourself going, going, going to a church service, and folks start foaming at the mouth, talking about, I'm being purged. Listen, get, get out of there as fast as you can. Because that, 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 that is not God. All right? You either cast that spirit out or leave. Because we have labeled that folks foaming at the mouth is an act of God. Child of God, no, it's not. That's not God. That's demonic spirits manifesting. Y'all, listen to me. If you stand in any place saying Jesus, 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 Jesus a billion times and you don't swallow, you're going to foam at the mouth. All right? That is not the Holy Ghost. Quit telling folk that's the Holy Ghost. That is not God. That's a demonic spirit manifesting in that person. You take your authority and you cast that spirit out and command him to leave that man or woman alone. Don't stand. Don't don't just stand and talk about the uh, devil. No, cast that joker out. See y'all right here. That demonic spirit was trying to clown Jesus. He gonna fall on the ground and start screaming. Why? Why? Yo, 
he wasn't scared. But here's what I believe. Bible didn't say it. But here is what I believe. That the disciples tried. And when this demonic spirit did the very same thing to the disciples, and when they backed away, that same demonic spirit figured that Jesus would back away too. But Jesus was like, what, 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 what's up with this? See, listen, y'all, listen, if a demon can punk you out, he will. I'm going to say that again. I wish I had y'all write it down, but I'm going to say it again. If a demon can punk you out, he will. Forgive how I say it, but right now it's how I feel it. Because when you realize that you're the one who stands in the place of authority, I don't care if he manifests, you command him to hold his peace and come out of there. Come on. Use your God. I don't care what it is. Whatever he attacks your body with, you speak to that issue in your life. And it's, I don't care whether it's cancer, leukemia, or, 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 or diabetes, blood pressure, whatever it is, you speak to that spirit. And you tell it in the name of Jesus, I command you to get up off of here. Come on. And listen, and believe it's supposed to happen. Well, Pastor, what happens if it doesn't happen right away? I don't change how I believe because it didn't happen right, right away. Come on, because listen, I believe that in the spirit realm, it happened because I told it to. Sometimes God give us miracles right away. Sometimes God take us through a process. Either way it happens, I believe when I pray that it happened. And when I pray, I stand on what I believe. So, so here, here's the question, y'all. The question is, what's showing up in your life that has the appearance of being impossible to deal with? Because what the devil will do is bring things in our lives. And because of how long it's been there, he'll make us believe it's not going to leave. But the devil is a liar. I don't care how long it's been there. It's got to go because I said so. A pastor right now is not gone. But listen, maybe it's it's it, it's done packed this bag. Come on. And it's walking toward the door. Why? Because I told it to go. The Bible said, y'all, Jesus said, if I talk to it and tell it where to go, it's supposed to obey me. But he says, when you stand praying, believe you receive. Which means then when I stand praying, I got to believe that what I say has come to pass. Even if I don't see it right now, I believe that what I say come to pass. Sickness, whatever it is, you got to go. Other day, y'all, uh, we, we were watching television, and a commercial came on television. And it was about cancer. And without fail, everybody said, my cancer. My cancer, my cancer. I said, no wonder you can't be healed. You are taking possession of the very thing the devil brought to kill you. No, that's not my cancer. It may be in my body, but I'm telling it, devil, you got to loose my body and let me go. Come on, because Jesus says, wherever I loose on earth, it's loose in heaven. And whatever I bind on earth, it's bound in heaven. And so if it's there, the permission had been given to you and I by God to bind it. Come on. And command that thing to loose our bodies. Come on. Loose our emotion. Loose our attitude. Loose our mind. We've been given permission by God himself. To walk in authority over that thing. Listen, I don't care what it's doing to you. You talk to it and tell it to let you go. But do it in Jesus' name. Yo, know, I got to move fast forward. Can, can give you the whole text. Jesus asked the question, says, how long has the thing been with the boy? The father said, since he was a child. But then Jesus, you all, makes this statement. He says, he says, if thou canst believe, in verse 
23 of Mark chapter 9. He says, if thou can't believe, all things are possible, here it is, to him that believe it. Woo, you got to see this. You got to see it. You got to see it. I'm going to say it again. Look at y'all right here in Mark 9, verse 23. And I'm, I'm almost done because I still want to pray. Jesus said right here is where I want to part. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him or her that believe. Pastor, what does that mean? He says, our belief system is the key to activating our faith that opens up doors to God possibilities. Now, the man's response was, Lord, I believe. Help thy my unbelief. In other words, I see what you can do. I heard what you can do. I know you can do it. But I've been here so long. Come on. Right? Like, like us. I've been here so long. I'm struggling with believing. Come on. Tonight, how many of you all are struggling with believing based on the longevity of your weight? Come on. Don't be ashamed. You're home by yourself because of the struggle of your weight on the manifestation. There's a problem with your belief system. Yeah, I know God, God can do it. Yes, I know he can. But right now, in my heart, because of what I'm looking at, because of my emotions, because of what the doctor is saying, because of what I'm, I'm looking at in my own personal life, you just right now have a hard time believing. Because, see, I can say it out my mouth, but God looks at the heart. And sometimes our heart is speaking louder than our words. Tonight, family, I'm going to pray. Whatever it is you're going through right now, tonight I'm going to pray for you. You can either put it in the chat, send it to me at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. You can DM me, whatever it is. Make sure tonight I get your request. But as I pray, if it's your body, put your hand on your own body. And in the area of uh, inconvenience, touch that spot. A pastor, it's my whole body. And put your hand on your heart or on your head. If it's the area of your body that you can reach, touch the area on your body. Tonight, we're going to believe God. That tonight, God transform your life tonight. And I believe by the Spirit of God. That by faith in the finished works of Calvary, that tonight, your healing tonight manifests in your, I mean, tangible proof of God's power and ability to move tonight in your life. Let's pray. Father, tonight, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl. And tonight, God, I join my faith with their faith. And in the name of Jesus, I send your power. I send the word through this medium. And I decree in the name of Jesus that every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl tonight be healed by the power of God. I curse the spirit of infirmity. You foul spirit sent from the devil. I curse you. I curse your assignment today in the name of Jesus. I curse it at the root, at the source. And I command you in the name of Jesus to loose the people of God. You have no place. You have no authority. Spirit of the living God, penetrate every phone, every computer right now in the name of Jesus. 
free your God tonight, free your children from disease, free your children from depression, free them from oppression, free them from every every attack of the enemy. I curse arthritis at the root in Jesus' name. You declare in your word that your, your word is health to our bones. And I command health and wholeness to the bones right now in the name of Jesus. I command, I curse cancer even now at the root right now. Never you lie, you foul python spirit. Take your hands off God's property. Loose that woman, that man in Jesus' name. I curse it at the root. And I command cancer to die at the source in the name of Jesus. I curse high blood pressure. I curse diabetes at the source right now. In the precious name of Jesus. Devil, you a liar. Take your hand off him right now. In Jesus' name. You have no place in that body. I pray for every cell in your body right now. I pray that the, the Holy Ghost of God would impregnate every cell even now in your body. Your bloodstream. Be clear. Be clean in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone right now having having pain in your in your uh, in your, your 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 bowel. I curse bowel obstruction right now in Jesus' name. I curse it by the power of God. I free your bowel up right now in Jesus' name. I curse back pain. I curse spinal deformation in the name of Jesus right now. I curse it. Straighten up by the power of God. Every stronghold be destroyed and loose right now. In the name of Jesus, I curse lack and self-esteem in Jesus' name. I curse the spirit of depression and suicidal tendencies in the name of Jesus. I curse it tonight in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I loose your peace right now. By the power of God, free their mind, free their emotions in Jesus' name. You come and set the captive free. And I decree by the power of God and our prayer warriors pray tonight that every captive man, woman, boy, and girl tonight is free by the power of Almighty God. Now, Father, I thank you. And I sit with expectation of your hand moving mightily in their lives. I thank you. And it's by faith in your son. I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Family, right there where you are, come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise where you are. Come on. Woo, good God Almighty. I feel the glory of God right now. Pastor, I don't feel it. You ain't got to feel it. We walk by faith, not by sight. But I sense the glory and the presence of God right now. You, my friend, are healed. Walk right now in their healing. Walk right now in the wholeness that Jesus has made available for you and I. His blood that he shed on Calvary has come to free you and I. It's all right. I need everybody in the chat right now to put in the chat. It's done. Come on. Y'all come on. I got to go. Right quick. Drop in the chat. It's done. Oh, yes. Amen. By the power of God, it's done right now. We decree it. And declare it by the word of God. It is so. In Jesus' name. Listen, y'all come on. Send your boy an email. Moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. All right. Moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. Listen, we're being for you, your family, members, your friends. And as uh another says, all those who are attached to you. Amen. We believe God. That you are healed by the power of God. Listen, write us and let us know what God did in your life. All right? This way, we can let somebody else know. And then uh, uh, their faith also can be strengthened. Don't forget, listen, join us this Sunday. Man, this Sunday, you all, the two become one. All right? As we join Zion Travelers and CFFC, and the two churches shall become one. Don't miss my post tomorrow. If we give you uh, uh, our new church name, and listen, y'all, we're going to be expecting God to do what only God can do. Listen, y'all, God promised 
miracles, signs, and wonders. Man, listen, I encourage you, bring your sick, bring your lame. Come on, bring those who are messed up and watch them get healed by the power of God. You know why? Because God said that he would do it. And I, listen, y'all, I'm crazy enough to believe that God will do what he said. You know why I believe it? Because he did it for your boy. And if God can do it for me, surely he'll do it for you. Because you know what? Like our text said, if thou, here it is, if thou can't believe, all things are possible to him that believe. If you believe it, declare, it's done. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, y'all, I'm past time. I'm over time. But I, listen, I got more to say, but I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to loose you and let you go. But don't forget, meet me Sunday at 1030. I'm sorry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 1030, all right, in the main sanctuary at 1030 at 14875 Wallace Street, all right? Wallace Street, South Holland, Illinois. That's 148. Somebody please put it in the chat. 14875 Wallace Street in South Holland, Illinois. Or if you don't know, uh, DM me on Facebook or uh, shoot me an email and I'll give you the address. Woo-wee! Y'all, i tell you what, man, I feel the glory of God right now in this studio. All right, y'all, we got to get out of here. Oh, start. Don't forget, Sunday School. Friday morning at 11 o'clock, 978-990-5000, access code 355-794. All right, we will have a God kind of faith. Call those things which be not as though they were. Don't forget that God has your life right where he wants it. All right, y'all, come on. Big hugs, come on. Big hugs, come on. I love y'all. Make some noise. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, God bless you. I love you. And we are out of here.